Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Sandeep and you are now going to learn InDesign and this is the first lesson where we'll be learning about basics, how to get started. If you're already familiar with Photoshop or Illustrator, InDesign is going to be quite simple for you. But if you're getting started and if you're not aware of any creative software so far, InDesign is a good way to start because it is fairly simpler than Illustrator and Photoshop as I mentioned. So. Let's get started and I'm going to take you through step by step. Let's get into this. The screen is on and I'm going to first of all open InDesign right in front of you so that we start from scratch. So InDesign is one of Adobe's uh, software for print design and uh, even for digital platforms. So let's get started. Now here as soon as InDesign opens up you have these options. Some of these presets or easy templates where you can get started. You could use letter, but let's go through the right way so that we quickly understand what it is. New file is where we'll go. As soon as we open the new file, I would like you to click on preview because this is going to help you understand what kind of file that you're opening. All right, so we'll press preview. That's the step one. Step number two is just give a file name because otherwise we'll keep looking out for untitled one, untitled two, final file, final one, final two, you know, so many times. So let's just do um, one pager. You can give any file name, all right? So as soon as you see there is the preview, you can see the canvas right here, that page. Right now we'll be working on only one page, so I'll bring it back to one. And I will work on Portrait and not landscape. Let's see if it if it is landscape how things change. So this is the landscape format and Otherwise right now for now we'll be working on portrait, which is the vertical format. All right Let's use the units as inches or centimeters whatever suits you you can use that because I have never used the other Picas or Picas whatever that measurement is. I've never used it. I have no idea about it, but I use inches. So let's use inches or you can use centimeters as I said. So then we'll come down to margins. So what happens in margins is basically you see this purple guide. This is only there for helping us to not uh, exceed the page. Sometimes you must have noticed in books and magazines, there is a slight margin all across. Here is an example. If you see on the book, See if it's focusing. All right, you have these uh, negative space, which is free, right? So these are all your margins where you are not uh, letting your text come across. So there's this little negative space that is given so that it gives an idea about leaving some space, and that is what this is going to help us. So depends on how much margins do you need. You can always change that to. Right now it is half an inch, you can change it to, you can go more or less. Right now let's go one inch for it, just for the fun of it. And I'll create the page. We don't need to understand about bleed right now. We'll go through that later. But for now, I think we are ready to get started with. So here comes our one page. And step number two is now to understand what kind of a workspace do you need. So workspace you'll find in window workspace and you have all these different options that you see here so out of that let me just show you quickly workspace is basically the interface which is which makes things convenient for you according to your requirement so for example if you're uh, creating a book then your workspace your workspace entirely changes you'll have all these uh, templates accordingly which will help you work workspace option digital publishing now, if it is digital publishing, you may have some other options, which I have not gone through right. But what we are going to use is Essentials Classic, which basically has the tools that we need for our work as designers. All right. So let's understand now the interface. The interface, basically, you, this is the tools which you're going to use on different functions. On your top side, you'll find all the properties. The properties will change according to the tools that you're going to use. And on the right side, you'll have all these different uh, effects and actions that you need to give. All right. So that's about it. And right in the center is your page. Now we need to import one more option called properties. Sometimes you may not have this here. You, so you, all you can do is you can go to window and bring down your properties. 
and there you go you have properties all right so whatever you want you can find it in window and you can get that ready here for your use okay so now we've understood these few little details the next thing that we need to understand is about all the keyboard shortcuts and I'll make a separate video for that so we can be really quick in this video let's get started the first thing that we the first tool that we need to use in any design there are basically two tools that we are going to use in this video the first one is the text tool the type tool type tool shortcut is T and what we'll do is in other softwares if we click that you can type the text but in InDesign you need to create a box so I'm going to follow this margin and I'll just kind of create a box which is half of the page vertically if you see there's a pink guide in the middle it shows that it is right in the center of the page okay so I'm going to stop there and I'm just going to create a, a text box and here what I'll do is I'll just right click right now and go to Go to fill with place placeholder text what it will do is it will just fill up a, a hypothetical text just a just for the reference all right now this is something just to understand how a text can you can you what all you can do with text okay we'll just do some basic stuff right now now the next thing what i'll do is i'll try to drag it down so that now i'm right in the center and the middle of it if you see there's this pink line horizontal pink line which is telling me that the, the placement of this block is right in the middle of the page height wise as well the next thing that I need to do is of course uh, check for options so I'll double click on the text <coughs> and I'm going to let's uh, zoom in and I'm going to change the font so you have the option to change the font right here you can take up any any other font that you like I prefer lighter, milder looking fonts. So font has changed. You can change the font size to whatever you like. 12 is a good size for printouts. And then the next thing that I'd like you to understand is about how you're going to uh, arrange your uh, paragraph. So if it is on the left alignment or center aligned or right aligned or other options are as well there to make your entire page uh, appealing. So I prefer this one as of now, you can choose any other that you like, because it finally, if you see it as a page, it shows like a block and it's kind of creating a little aesthetic uh, way of uh, putting up the text. Next thing that I'll do is another option and I'll create a heading or a topic. So what I'll call is, let's call it creativity for now. And uh, I'll use a, a creative font, maybe something like that. I'll increase the size of it so it goes up till here. Now, one small option that I'd like you to play with is uh, the character spacing, where you'll press Option and the arrow button to the right. Okay. And that will give you character spacing. Basically, it just widens up your space with the same size of the text and it gives more fun element to the, the look of it. So that is done. I'll just pull it down. And then now the next thing that we'll do is we'll add an image on the right side of the page. So for that, we'll use this option, which is basically a rectangle frame tool, more like a placeholder, where I'll just click and create another box, which is going to be equal to the, the heading and the paragraph. And I'll not exceed from the margin because that is how we're supposed to stay, right? Now, that is the placeholder to put up an image. What I'll do is I'll just go to, the, go to my, my uh, folders, and I look for something which is interesting. Let me just find if there's anything interesting. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll put up this. All I have to do is drag and drop the image and it'll get placed here, all right? Now the next thing that we need to do is of course we need to adjust the image, maybe the size of the image which is inside that box. 
or entirely. So let's try to do that. I'll use the black arrow. And when we use, when I hover around, you'll find this little circle. Click on that. It's going to help me move my image, whatever side you want, you want it to be. Okay. So I'll be moving it slightly here because there's an animal. I remember, yeah. So I'd like to bring this right in the center. That is just my choice. You can do it accordingly, whatever you like. And on the other hand, you can also, when you click, I'll just zoom out and I'll show you what. When you click on this, on the circle, you'll be able to see the margin of the image. So basically the image inside the box is this size, this huge size. So I can even press Option and Shift or Alt and Shift for Windows, which is going to then help me reduce the size from all the directions. All right, and slightly I'll just press Shift and I'll reduce the size from the top. Now it gives, shows a better view of the image. There's more to it. And of course, there is one more line that can come here just to align. So that's more like it. So this is how you can get started with InDesign, which is as easy as this. Now, if you want to learn about adding multiple images in one page, you can watch the next video right here. I'll see you soon.